Hello, I'm Angela, and I want to share a chapter of my life that's been shaped by the challenges I've faced with my husband and in-laws. Right now, I'm in the midst of a divorce, but I thought my story might resonate with others, especially if you've ever dealt with constant criticism from in-laws for no real reason. My journey began when Dylan and I met online. I was a 21-year-old college student, and he was 27, already settled in his career. Despite our age difference, we clicked. I've never been someone to judge based on age or appearance, so Dylan's age didn't faze me. However, Dylan had his doubts. He often questioned why I would choose someone older. I don't get it, Angela. I'm so much older than you. You could easily find someone your age, he would say, but I'd always respond. Yes, I could, but I don't want to. I love you for who you are, not your age. Dylan never fully believed me. He thought there had to be another reason, convinced that my feelings couldn't be genuine. Deep down, I could see that his self-esteem was fragile, and I made every effort to prove him wrong. I never let him spend money on me, even though I wasn't struggling financially. I worked part-time, bought him gifts, and always paid for my own meals. But despite everything I did to show him how much I cared, his doubts never went away. It was heartbreaking. For the first few years, I couldn't understand why Dylan had such a poor opinion of himself. But then, when I met his parents, especially his father, William, the pieces of the puzzle started to fall into place. William was a self-made man who had won the lottery years ago, and it had completely changed their lives. They bought a massive house and secured their future, but with the wealth came an attitude of superiority. During our first meeting, William proudly boasted, Not everyone can strike it rich like me. I worked hard, and look where it got me. Winning the lottery on the first try? How often does that happen? We've always made smart decisions. Dylan finished college, but he'll never have the kind of money we do. Before I won the lottery, he couldn't even get a girlfriend. I guess the women he dated were just after his money. They left when we called them out for being gold diggers. And we were right. Dylan just keeps making poor choices. Hearing William and Shirley talk down to Dylan was infuriating. Their constant insinuations that every woman Dylan dated, including me, was just after his money, were not only insulting but humiliating. And after years of hearing these comments, Dylan internalized them. He began to believe that his worth was tied to money, and worse, that I might be with him for the wrong reasons. It was crushing, and I knew I had to speak out, both for myself and for him. I calmly voiced my disagreement, explaining that Dylan had worked hard to establish himself in his career, and with time, he would continue to achieve more success. Despite my efforts, the conversation veered into a negative direction when someone suggested that women were only interested in Dylan for his wealth. I clarified that our finances were shared, but Dylan co-owned the house, and reassured them that our relationship was grounded in love, not material gain. Trying to lighten the mood, I empathized with Angela, acknowledging that it could be difficult to accept the success of others and their luxurious homes. However, I couldn't hide my growing frustration with the comments from William and Shirley. Dylan, fully aware of the situation, remained silent throughout it all. Later, I confronted him about his parents' behavior, expressing my disappointment. I asked why he hadn't defended himself or addressed the insults. Dylan explained that in the past, people had tried to manipulate him for his money, using elaborate schemes involving the house. He said that just because some people were gold diggers, it didn't mean that everyone had those intentions. He also reminded me that I had remained quiet when my family insulted him, acknowledging that maybe his family wasn't entirely wrong. He pointed out that without my own parents, we were entirely dependent on his inheritance, which some might find strange. Dylan, what you're saying doesn't make sense. I've never asked you to spend money on me. And just because I don't have an inheritance doesn't mean you should assume I'm after wealth. I responded, trying to make him understand my perspective. 
But despite my attempts to explain, Dylan refused to see it my way. He continued to express his love for me, insisting that the reasons behind our relationship shouldn't matter. While many might find such reassurance comforting, it left me unsettled. I didn't want him to view me in such a negative light. I tried having open conversations with him and even suggested therapy, believing it might help him. However, he insisted everything was fine on his end. So eventually, I gave up trying. I distanced myself from his relatives to avoid further conflict. As time passed, we decided to get married soon after I graduated. My job wasn't high paying, but I managed to save enough for our wedding, and we split the costs equally. We tied the knot when I was 24, but the following four years were incredibly difficult. Dylan often visited his parents, and each time he came back in a bad mood, despite my constant efforts to reassure him, his family continued to mock him, calling me a gold digger. I urged Dylan to reduce his visits to them, but he remained indifferent. Despite years of showing my commitment, things took a turn for the worse on Dylan's birthday. We kept the celebration simple at home, and I gave him the expensive watch he had been eyeing for months. Dylan was thrilled with the gift, but my happiness quickly faded when he insisted on showing it off at his parents' house. Once we arrived, he excitedly approached Shirley and William, proudly displaying the watch and saying, Mom, Dad. Check out this gorgeous watch Angela got me. I've been wanting it for so long. Isn't it beautiful? Shirley immediately remarked. Oh, did she notice the resemblance between Dylan and her? Love can be confusing. You know, we were a little worried for a while. Be careful, William. She's only interested in money. She married our son because we have a $350,000 house. Let's not forget the facts. Yeah, that's true, William added. I almost forgot that the house is the only reason Angela married Dylan. I couldn't hold back anymore. Excuse me, I said. Why do you think I married your son for your house? Well, you were living in an apartment after working for five years. Plus Dylan is so much older than you. Why else would you marry him unless you wanted something from him? I'm sure the house was always part of the attraction, if not his money. I chose to be with your son because I love him. If you have any doubts about my intentions, Dylan knows the truth, and he'll back me up. Isn't that right, Dylan? To my surprise, Dylan remained silent, not offering a single word of support. My stomach sank. The fact that his parents saw me as a gold digger was already hard enough but his lack of response was even more crushing. He kept his gaze down, avoiding eye contact. I couldn't hold it in any longer. Why are you silent, Dylan? I asked. Your parents have always believed I married you for your money. How can they truly understand who I am if you don't speak up? Why are you letting them think I'm after your wealth? Dylan shifted uncomfortably, mumbling. I'm not sure what you want me to say. Angela, I can't confirm if my parents are wrong. There's always a chance you're interested in the house. I was stunned. Are you serious? Dylan, do you really think I married you for your possessions? That's not fair to me, and it's not true. It's concerning that you never thought about buying a house. Dylan continued, as if dismissing my frustration. We never talked about it. If you're renting, Shouldn't buying a house be your top priority? It's about your priorities, but you chose not to commit to buying a home. You saw that our house is far beyond your financial reach, and instead of trying to make it happen on your own, you decided to marry Dylan and settle here. That's the rational choice, isn't it? You know, Angela, why did you choose to marry me? I know you care about me, but it feels like there's something more to it than just love. Dylan said. I stared at him, at a loss for words. It was like everything I had done to show him I loved him for who he was, and not for his money, was suddenly thrown back in my face. The revelation hit me like a freight train, leaving me speechless. 
All the love I had for Dylan suddenly seemed irrelevant. It felt as if everything I had done for our relationship was dismissed in an instant. My in-laws had always seen me as someone after money. But it was Dylan's response that truly shattered me. His silence, his failure to stand up for me, was what cut the deepest. It wasn't just their opinion of me, it was his. In that moment, something inside me clicked, and I made a life-altering decision. I would file for divorce. I didn't speak about it right away, though. I kept my decision to myself, waiting for the right time. Once we got back home, I contacted a lawyer, expressing my intention to begin the process. The lawyer confirmed that the necessary documents would be ready within a week. I decided to move into a separate room temporarily, giving myself space to reflect. Dylan didn't seem to notice. He assumed I was just upset and venting, unaware that everything was about to change. When the divorce papers arrived at my parents' house, I packed up my belongings and left. Dylan called, frantic, asking where I was. I told him to meet me at a specific address, along with my in-laws. He had never been to my parents' house, so I gave him the details. Though he seemed confused, he agreed to come. When they arrived, I was waiting on the porch. The look on their faces when they saw the house was priceless. With a calm smile, I spoke up. I'm sure you're wondering why I brought you here. This is quite a beautiful home, isn't it? I'm sure no one's house compares to this one. It must be worth a fortune easily in the millions. In fact, this mansion is valued at around three, five million dollars today. A steep price, but it's worth every penny. And the furniture? Even more valuable. The total price of the furnishings alone could easily be in the millions as well. Angela, what is this place? How do you have access to something like this? One of them asked, clearly bewildered. I grinned slightly, come inside, and I'll explain. It's too much to explain out here on the porch. By the way, what exactly did you mean by your porch? I ignored the question, walking inside as they followed behind me. Their amazement only grew once we were inside. It was obvious the house had been built with no expense spared. I motioned for them to sit down before speaking again. I made a decision, which is why I called you here today. I've filed for divorce, and here are the papers. We can go for an uncontested divorce if you're willing. They looked at each other, puzzled. Why are you filing for divorce? One of them asked, clearly confused. It's because you and your family believe, I trailed off, taking a deep breath. You believe I married Dylan for his money. I'm just a precious metal digger aiming for your house, I said, my voice laced with irony. That's not true, but you won't listen. So, to save you from my gold digging ways, I've decided to divorce Dylan. It'll make everyone happier in the end, I added, my tone steady but firm. Dylan's response was immediate. Divorce? Just because my parents spoke the truth? That's absurd. We didn't say anything wrong. Why the dramatics? I think it's the best thing for all of us. Dylan, if she's so sure about her decision, you should just sign the papers. Then you can find someone who truly loves you. William chimed in, his voice almost too casual. I turned to them, my frustration boiling over. Why did you bring us here? Then? Are you expecting me to include this house in our divorce settlement? Dylan's family looked stunned. Why would I buy this house when it's already mine? I said confidently, watching as their faces fell into disbelief, as if I had just detonated a bomb in their minds. Dylan and his parents exchanged confused glances. How can you afford a house like this? Dylan asked, his voice dripping with doubt. You're just renting and your job doesn't pay enough to cover this. Don't lie to us. I took a deep breath, trying to keep my voice steady. Dylan, I didn't lie. Remember when I mentioned my parents leaving me an inheritance? Well, this house is part of it. It's held in a trust for now. But here's the catch. I don't get it until I turn 33. 
That's why I don't have a regular job, I'm waiting for the trust fund. Impossible, Dylan said, shaking his head. Your parents passed away years ago. Why didn't they let you have the house earlier? My parents were worried about people taking advantage of me. I explained, my voice calm but resolute. They told me not to discuss the house or trust fund with anyone. They set everything up in a trust to keep it secure until I turned 33. They wanted me to be with someone who truly cared about me, not just for the inheritance. Wow, Angela, we had no idea. This house is massive. We could have a very comfortable life here, William said, his tone shifting to something closer to awe. It would have been nice if you'd told us earlier. We were worried you might have hidden motives. Clear communication could have saved all this confusion. I've always said you're a great match for Dylan. And now that we know about your wealth, it's obvious you're a perfect fit for him. I couldn't help but laugh at how quickly their perception of me had shifted. It was almost laughable. In a flash, they'd gone from accusing me of only wanting Dylan for his money to praising me as a perfect match for him. What struck me as even more bizarre was how easily they overlooked the fact that I had just filed for divorce. I reached into my bag, pulled out the divorce papers, and slapped them on the table. As I was saying, here's my signature for the uncontested divorce. I said, sliding the papers toward them, you can sign these to make it easy. Or, if you prefer, we can take this to court. I won't continue living with you. Dylan pleaded, his voice strained, Angela, please understand, there's no need to rush this, you've proven you're not after my money, there's no longer any reason for a divorce, we can even apologize for the misunderstandings, things can improve, can't they? Yes, William is right, Shirley chimed in, her tone softer now, we're sorry, Angela, we were wrong to question your honesty. I took a deep breath before responding. My words measured. Dylan, your apologies don't feel genuine. For the past three years, your family has criticized me, accusing me of being after your wealth. I had hoped you would support me, but instead, you joined them in labeling me that way. I can't stay with someone who disrespects their spouse. I've made my decision to end this relationship. We can either separate amicably or we can go through the legal process. The choice is yours. Dylan, Shirley, and William tried everything to persuade me, pleading with me to forgive and forget. As if it were just a small misunderstanding, they kept insisting that we could move past it. But not once did they acknowledge how much they had damaged my reputation. They never once admitted the hurt they caused. When I had finally reached my limit, I told them they needed to leave before I involved law enforcement. My anger must have been evident, as they quickly backed off. In the weeks that followed, Dylan and his family didn't relent. They called, texted, and showed up at my door, begging for me to change my mind. They offered me incentives, promised that things would be different, and repeated how much they wanted things to go back to normal. But their actions only confirmed what I already knew, they still believed I was motivated by money. Each attempt to persuade me only fueled my anger. Ironically, because I was a co-owner of the house, I was entitled to half of its value, and that knowledge only intensified their desperation to reconcile. But despite their persistent efforts, I remained firm in my decision. I moved my belongings to my parents' house fully aware of my rights. Even though I hadn't yet officially received my share of the house, Dylan and his family kept reaching out. But I eventually changed my phone number to avoid their constant communication attempts. The situation even escalated when Dylan showed up at my workplace. Security had to intervene and ask him to leave, as I had no intention of engaging in a conversation with him. Almost a year has passed since I filed for divorce and we're close to finalizing the separation. Even if Dylan fights it, the courts will make the final decision. I'm doing just fine on my own, content, financially secure, and living life at my own pace. I've been on a few casual dates but have kept things light and uncomplicated. 
Dylan's cousin mentioned how difficult it's been for Dylan to buy out my share of the house. As he's actively promoting a sale, it's clear he still harbors resentment toward his parents for all the chaos in his life. To be honest, I don't worry about it anymore. My sole focus now is to free myself from that family and move forward with my life.